All right, y'all, welcome to Good News Southern Gospel. I'm Steve McJunkins. This is Dan Rivera. Thank y'all for joining us today. We've got a great episode planned, everything going on today. We've got a lot of stuff planned. Yeah, man, I'm very excited. Got some uh, great news to talk about today. An exciting interview with Brian Hudson from Sold Out Quartet. Very excited about that. So let's go ahead and get started, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So (coughs) News. We got some news. All right, this is the news segment right now, and uh, we got some news for today. Uh, the Guardians with John Darren Rousey, Stan Toller, and the Toller Brothers are teaming up together for a Revive America tour. I'm really excited about this because, I mean, yeah. uh, obviously we know America needs revival. And yeah. um, I think these guys are going to really help us and uh, bring, you know, patriotic songs, uh, their own music. Yeah. And, uh, you know. A lot of veterans um, on this tour, too. Yeah. So a lot of guys that can bring a lot of different. Absolutely. And, and even uh, preaching and messages, uh, you know, uh, through the word of God. I'm really excited about that. Love John Darren. And yeah. um, great songwriter, great musician. All those great guys producer. in the Guardians yeah. and the Toller Brothers are just phenomenal guys. So we're really excited about that. Yeah, so make sure you check that out. Common Bond Quartet yes. is signing with Chapel Valley. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm Chapel really Valley excited. is expanding their uh, their team of artists, their family of and artists. And they always are, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, and Common Bond will bring a, a nice addition to yeah. to their family. Common Bond Quartet is is a phenomenal quartet. They actually entered themselves in the Day One Quartet oh, great. Uh, competition. Good. I don't remember if they placed or not. I don't think they did place, but I mean... Not in the top five, but I mean, there was a lot of great but, groups that yeah. didn't make it. So. But I mean, going to Chapel Valley now, it's almost like they didn't need to. Yeah. You know? yeah. So congratulations to you guys signing with Chapel Valley. Great, great, great studio. I know you guys are going to put out a lot of great projects. So yeah, uh, be Valley looking forward cute. for yeah. um, Common Bond Quartet. Here's their website right here that you can look at. Uh, to yeah, check them out. Check them out. Also, <laughs> here's the Guardians website. Look yeah. at real quick to check them out uh, for the Revive America tour and the Toller Brothers. We'll put them together. All right, this is some big news for us, my some friend. Some big news, man. Yeah. I want to announce this one because I'm yeah. so excited about this. Um, real quick, I don't want to be too long, um, but we have we just started the blog back up about a month ago. Or maybe yeah. more than that, like two months ago. Yeah, now. about a month, month and a half. Yeah, yeah. I, wow, it's man. well, man, it flies by so fast. So it's been crazy. Yeah. Well, getting the interviews has always been, you know, not a trial for me, but always just been something that I've yeah. had a little, like pursue Work a little at. bit yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. And say, hey, you know, because some guys, some people, won't, sometimes some people won't respond just because they work so much or whatnot or sing so much. Yeah. So, anyway, to make a long story short, I've had to say, you know what, I can't really book the interviews anymore. So I got my good friend Nicholas Comstock to come Nick on board. Yeah. Let me tell you what's going on with our interviews, y'all. It's been crazy. I messaged my good friend. Blowing yeah, up. like crazy. Yeah. I messaged my good friend Jim Hudson, who's a radio DJ in Columbus, Indiana. Go right now, download the app WYGS yeah, on you your can smartphone. To it wherever you're at. Yeah, literally, yeah. it's awesome. Um, WYGS Radio. Uh, you can listen to it with Jim Hudson, the main DJ uh, for the week, and he gave me some contacts. For uh, interview, actually, what he did was he took my number down and he just messaged like thirty people on Facebook and right whatnot, here, emails, guy, you know. and he said, "Call this guy." Literally, like two minutes after he messaged me, five people blew up my phone, like back to back to back. I'm not lying. Some people I didn't even get a hold of because they were calling me while I was on the phone with someone else. Literally that crazy. And I'm talking about the biggest artist in Southern Gospel. We got some huge announcements coming we up. Got some huge so. interviews uh, in the future. Mike LeFevre, Daniel Riley. Ernie Haas, Tim Duncan, some great, and Nicholas has, Jim, thank yeah. you so much for helping us set those up, but also Nicholas has been on the ball with these things, and we're excited to announce that Nick is our new booking coordinator for our interviews. Yeah. So Nicholas is doing all the booking. If you would like to be interviewed on Good News Southern Gospel, or if you want to be on the show, um, call us, and uh, we will put a number right here for you. Uh, up here, and this is uh, Nicholas's number, our booking coordinator. So call him, and we will get that set up as soon as possible. We've got yeah, a lot. Sure. We're booked, you yeah. know, already almost in. You know, we're booked for the whole month of April. You know, so we're gonna start being yeah. so, uh, booking and, and huge artists. We're excited about exciting. We're excited about announcing that. Yeah, as, as, so as we're able so, to. So. Uh, thank you so much, Nick, for that. We really appreciate you. We love you. And uh, he is our new booking coordinator, so call Nick if you want to be on the show, and we're getting that set up. So that is it for our new segment for today. 
All right, y'all, now we're ready for our top three segment for today. Yeah. And our top three is the top three mixed groups. Mixed yeah. groups. A ton I, of these. I'm, I'm really excited about this because I'm interesting. Uh, interesting. You're, you're, <laughs> I'm interested. I am interesting. I'm interested <laughs> to see uh, what our top three are. Yeah. So uh, uh, let's there's start. There's so with... many different directions you could go with this. You go first. Okay. I got, you got to go. Okay. Sorry. All right, so um, I, I spent a lot of time trying to figure this out, but I think I, I think I got it. Okay, so number one, uh, we're n- my number three. Start off with my number three. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Taylors. Okay. For my number three, um, they uh, yeah, I don't know that they have put out a project that I don't mm. like. They've had stronger projects yeah, than others, absolutely. But um, they just have a new project being released. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Um, just everything they come out with is gold. Um, so I, I love them. They're, They're great so live. Oh, oh yeah. They Dude. are phenomenal live. I think it was the first concert me and you went together to yeah. see it was a Taylor Swift live. Yeah, and it was it was phenomenal. One so. of the best ones I've seen live ever. So, the Taylors. Taylors is your top three. Yeah. Oh man, uh, I'm gonna put my top <coughs> my third spot because okay, there's so many great family groups and mixed groups in general. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna go. My my third top mixed group is Jim Brady Trio. Okay, cool. Okay. And I don't know if that's in your top three or not, but um Jim no, they, Brady they Trio. They just fell out of mine. They fell I, out dude, mine. there's so many good ones. And yeah. we're like there's the Perry's, we may mention that, there's the Browders, Hoppers, there's so many good groups. Yeah. So Cowards. I mean they're all in my top ten, I'll say I'll tell you that. Oh so yeah. So anyway, yeah. uh top three Jim Brady Trio love they're brand new, pretty much. Um been on the scene for two years now, so yeah. Phenomenal yeah. group. Yeah, uh, they're awesome. That's my number three. Number two, I'm gonna go with, uh, and I gotta explain this just really quickly. Um, I love this group. This group will always be. This is my all-time favorite Kay. mixed group. Okay. All time. We uh, we stipulated this and said we're gonna do current. Kay. Okay. And Kay. so I hate this. Um, and so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it. But number two is the Perrys. Okay. Um, I love the Perrys. They're uh, they are one of the one of the groups that consistently every time they put out a CD, it's packed with yeah. powerful yeah. songs. Um, and Libby Perry is one time. of my all time favorite yeah. female singers. Um, I love the Perrys. They are my all time favorite right now. My current number two uh, mixed group. That's that's awesome. The uh, Perrys are so good, so good, yeah. so good. So uh, Perrys for you. Number two for me, I'm going to go with this. Uh, they've been in my top three with vocalists. Um, we just uh, talked to Maria, but I'm going to say the Kramers. I, yeah. I have a um, just love for their group and their music and their ministry in general. So that's cool. why they would be in my top three. Uh, awesome group. Uh, so yeah, they number, really are. Number two, uh, the Kramers. They really are. They're phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and we loved uh, talking with Maria last week. Absolutely. And she, was, she was the bomb. Yep. Okay, my number one. My number one. Um, I'm interested. Yeah. Um, I'm interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested. <laughs> my number one. Um, this is like brand new. Right? This is like breaking news, y'all. Um, because this is like last couple weeks. Is moved into my number one. Now you know who it is. Um, I really don't. Okay. So uh, I was kind of just introduced to their music. And I went back and I've listened to a lot of their music from the last like know, few years. Right. Um, the vocalists in this group are quickly becoming my favorites in their respective parts. So my number one group has to be right now the Neelands. Uh, number Dude, one group. Left field, bro. Had no yeah. idea. I'm serious. What? Yeah, no idea. <laughs> Who did you no think idea. I was going to say? I thought, well, I thought you were going to say the Irwins. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I know. Okay. Uh, well, dude, all right. okay. So all these group we're mentioning, are like all, <laughs> they're all a tie. Everybody, there's a tie. They're all tied. <laughs> but I have to go Neelands. I have to go Neelands. So um, good. Amber so right now is one of my all-time favorite female artists. Female artists. She's so good. Uh, the Neelands, they always put out. Like she talked about it on the show, she, they, she's always put. They're putting out great new stuff that's that's innovative. I can't and explain great. like her talent and I like know. her family. Dude, have you heard Autumn though? Mm-hmm. Like if you watch videos of Autumn, like her their whole family is Blessed like, Assurance, and like even Kelly and Jason. I love Jason's voice. Love yeah. Kelly's voice. I mean, phenomenal <laughs> group, dude. Great number one pick. 
Yeah. Um, man, you're you're killing me here. But I love the Irwins though too. So you here. <sighs> All right. Mm, so why? You're number one. Why are you doing this to me? I'm um, sorry. Uh, I I don't want to <laughs> go with like cliche, but I kind of am going to. Um, they're they're a great group, and you can't you can't deny it. So let's just put them up there, and let's say the Collins were family. Um, they're they're so good. Their music yeah. is phenomenal. They have some what? I'm just thinking about all the groups that I we do will, not we have miss. in our list. I know it's so the sad. Hoppers, the Tallies, the oh, Irwins. Like oh gosh, <laughs> I mean. Talk about all these groups have had, uh, besides uh, like the new up and coming groups like the Kramers, yeah. um, all these groups have had like top 10 songs, yeah. you know. So, Collingsworth family, they're is all great. literally, oh, they're, literally, if we man. didn't have to pick a top three, they're all tied. I'm serious. I know. And I'm not just saying that to be funny, but I know. So, um, so let's go ahead and we're going to play Then Came the Morning by the Neelands. Yeah, that's a good uh, one. From NQC. Dude, I was there live. Yeah. Like, listening to her say, dude. Standing ovation. I sat. I sat like in the fifth row or something like that with all the beast uh, artists that were up there, and we had a lot of fun. And, oh, and um, their version is dude, like, cause it's so soft, and then all of a sudden Amber comes out of nowhere, like that cat. And I was like, oh, you know, like yeah. little boy, like freaking out. Goosebumps. So, uh, like, so yeah. great. So check <coughs> right here. Thank you. Good morning. This next clip is going to be of the Collingsworth family uh, singing at NQC this past year. Um, uh, I, I love this song. Show a little bit of love and kindness. Uh, famous Collingsworth family yeah. uh, song. So check this out. So that was the uh, Collingsworth family singing that song, and that is it for our top three of today. Great choices, man. Yeah. So yeah. 
That is it for the top three segment for today. All right, so we have recently been doing a lot of sold out like reviews and just talking about a lot of sold out. We got yeah. Brian Hudson uh, on in a couple yeah. minutes, yeah. Yeah. and um, very excited about you know just sold outs ministry and everything like that. Yeah, we had they an are really coming out with great stuff. Yeah, right uh, dude, now. our second interview was with John Layton, the new piano player for Sold Out. So yeah. uh, phen- phenomenal guys. So what we're doing today is we're reviewing Ian Owens. Uh, Ain't misbehaving CD, which Check is, it out. you see right here. Yeah, um, the artwork looks great. Yeah, it, do, it does. It really does. And uh, uh, he's got the little signature on his CD yeah, which there, which, cool. which is really cool. That way, yeah. I see what you did, Ian. You don't have to sign CDs now. Ah, you sly dog. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be like, still sign. I want your actual. Yeah. I want your actual uh, signature. Good. That was a good plan, though. Right? That was a good idea. <laughs> so... Um, so the Ain't Misbehaving CD, Ian Owens, it was really cool of Ian uh, to send us the CD. Yeah, for free. So, so thanks, Ian. Shout out to uh, Ian. We, uh, we definitely appreciate that. Uh, I, am, I am stoked, though, because um, if y'all remember back when we did our top three bass singers, Ian Owens made my top three. I think he was my number two. Um, I love Ian's voice, and so when we I found out— We talked about a little bit about uh, him in the first interview with John Layton. Right, right, yeah, we did that, too. Um, and so when I found out that we were going to be reviewing this, his, his solo project, mm-hmm. I was like, yes, because I love his, his voice, and I couldn't wait to hear a whole CD of him. Dude, and you don't think that this CD is going to be what it is. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Like, you think that maybe he's going to, he's going to do some, like, just straight-up gospel stuff. But my thing with Ian was, like, his voice came out of nowhere, honestly, because you yeah. hear him sing bass. We've yeah. heard him with Ernie Haas' signature sound, now with Sold Out, uh, previously before Ernie Haas with the Imperials, and just phenomenal, phenomenal bass voice, but now, man, you hear all of it. I'm going to say it like this. Um, he, you know, a lot of bass singers are basically people who can uh, sing low, right? Ian is a great singer, who happens to have a low voice. Yes. He is just a fan- I, I mean, several times we're listening to the CD together. And several times I said, man, I could just listen to this guy sing all day. Because he just has just a phenomenal voice. And it's not the standard bass voice. Although he That's does true. have... But he's got that different tone. Yeah. That more like bombastic soloist bass voice. Yeah. That dude, when he sings something, you're like... Yeah, you got you to listen. Yeah, you got to pay attention. You know, so yeah. No, sorry, oh, he's, he's, <laughs> like, so anyway, um, yeah, you're like mesmerized. So let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. Yeah, um, here's Ain't a misbehaving CD. Go ahead. Yeah, here's a track list up here. Uh, so, so we'll kind of talk about this for a little bit. Well, which because it's different. It's it's very different. And what I love about the CD though is it's got it's got songs from different genres. Mm-hmm. It's not just gospel. Mm-hmm. I think only like four four songs on here are gospel songs. Yeah. And then the rest are, you know, love songs, secular songs, fun yeah. songs. Yeah. You know, which I think is great, Ian. I love that. I love that. I love that. Because I, I think there are some songs that we shouldn't forget, you yeah. know, that are that are secular, you know, but they're good. Yeah. So, um, Ain't Misbehaving, a fun I'll say song. this, though, too. Go ahead. Um, talk about, just on the production side of this, real quick, um, Arthur Rice yeah. has his hand on this. Um, he does some of the background vocals of yeah. it as well. Dude, um, Michael some, Howard played the yeah. piano. Yeah, so this is no joke of a yeah, CD. Dude. It's, it's great. Great, 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 so, great. So it's a track list. It starts off with Ain't Misbehaving, which is a good, fun, opening song. Yeah, it's, and it's kind of like cool, like crooner style feel yeah, to absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so yeah. Ain't Misbehaving is a great song. Great way to kick off the yeah. CD. He did, then he goes on to Run On. Run On. Which is uh, Johnny Cash, I believe. Johnny Cash did it. it. Elvis Presley did it. Um, a lot of guys did it. Yeah. And I was really excited when I saw that. I, I like Ian's like, updated version of it. Oh, man. It's a little bit faster. It's, it's a really lot good. more like catchy. Yeah. Great. His inflections of his vocals are yeah. insane because you don't yeah. expect him to do it. He's a bass singer. Yeah. You know, you're just used to hear, hear the bass singer. I know. I know. As, as a bass, I found that, you know, in my upper tones or whatever, mm-hmm. it, it's, you can kind of do some of those little tricks and things. He, all throughout his voice, he has these little things that he does. He, we were listening on one of those songs. I forget which one it was on now. But he does this thing. And we both look at each other like, man, that was cool, right? Yeah. He does that I think stuff. It was actually, that's why I love to call his name, but I'm not sure. Um, oh, I think you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he does these little tricks and stuff all throughout was, his range that are like, man. So his... Incredible, incredible. Yeah. And you're used to hearing a bass singer just hit these, bottom out these low notes. And he does that a couple times, but... 
his oh, range is up just and down. Good singing. Like he's he's between a baritone and a, a high baritone and a low bass <laughs> range the whole CD, which is awesome. Uh, run on good. Teach me, Lord, to wait. Yeah, was more introduced as a bass feature uh, more With nationally when Aaron McCune did Aaron McCune. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And Ian went and did the same arrangement. Mm -hmm. uh, phenomenal, but it's just a solo. Yeah, just him. Yeah. What I really like about Ian's CD is it's a solo project. Mm -hmm. There's only background vocals on a couple of songs. Mm -hmm. Where on Teach Me, Lord, to wait, he could have had background vocals. Mm -hmm. He didn't. And I think, dude, great decision. Great decision. Because sometimes it's overpowering, and it's like this isn't a solo Especially for CD. a bass. Yeah, yeah, it's like this is a choir CD. Come on, and, now. and you know? I've heard too on a lot and of. I'm bass, glad he didn't do that. Uh, I've heard too on a lot of on some different bass solo projects. Um, I'm not bashing this necessarily, but they'll do like like a quartet song, and they're singing bass on their solo CD. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do that. Yeah. on any of his songs. Yeah. So I really like that. So great, great, great. This um, old house, man, dude. I don't even know. I, don't I even didn't know. know you could do like, this old house in a different style. I don't even know. Like literally, when it comes to uh, the course, um, ain't gonna need this house no longer. Ain't gonna need this house no more. He he like dropped the melody. Yeah. He said, you know, forget it, and like I'm doing something different. Mm -hmm. So cool. Like yeah. it starts with like this cool like electric. Actually, yeah. that's gonna be the clip that we're gonna play. Yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna play uh, this old house. Listen to it. This is this old house from um, Ian's project. And check this out, it's super cool. Yeah. Uh, this old house is a getting shaky. This old house she's a getting old. This old house that's in the rain and this old house that's in the cold. On my knees I'm a getting chilly, but I feel no fear of pain. Cause I see an angel peeking through a broken window pane. <laughs> Time to fix the shingles, ain't got time to fix the floor, ain't got time for all the hinges, all the bend the window pane, ain't gonna need this house no longer. I'm a getting ready to meet the same. Okay, so that was this old house from Ian's project. See, so we told cool. you. So cool. It's really cool. Um, great long black train. Uh, of course, like, you know Josh Turner. Yeah, a, a lot of people have done that as well. Yeah. Um, my mind forgets a million things. A thing called love. That's why I love to call his name. Ghost yeah. Riders in the Sky. Real quick, I want to talk about these last yeah. two songs. Ghost Rider. It comes out of left field a little bit. It when we does. get to this song, like, we're like, man, you, this okay, is cool. This is different. You hear like some countryish, and then you yeah. hear some like softish, and then you hear some. Um, and this comes on with like the electric and guitar like, and like and all it's the, like. We, 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 and like, I dude, I'm like, yeah, rock on, dude. You know, so I'm like, I'm like, dude, because I'm a, I'm a rock guy, like through and through. I, lo I love rock, I love alternative, and dude comes out. So he out comes of the out blue, with this song, and it's really and it's, cool. It's super cool. It's like country rockish. Yeah. And uh, Ghost Riders in the Sky, super fun song. Uh, what a wonderful world, dude. Way to end the CD, man. Yeah. Like way to end it. It, it was. I told super you Super soft, super slow. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I told you, I'd heard Tim Duncan's version of this with Canton Junction. Which we love, Tim Duncan. And I uh, loved it. Um, so I was excited to hear what Ian did with it. And I love that he stripped it all the way down. It's basically just piano, um, a little bit of strings, um, and no background vocals. And so it has a lot of room to breathe. Dude. And it's so good. You it's get a chance pretty... to just really just hear his voice. And it's just, oh, it's Gosh. beautiful. Lo lo love Ian. So, uh Go check out this. This is Ian's website right here. And you're going to see that. Go buy his project yeah. Project now. It's called Eight Misbehaving. Uh, go buy it. I'm sure he'll love to hear from you. Go yeah. to his Facebook page. He's got um, a Facebook fan page for it. Um, Ian Owens. And see him with Sold Out. Go man. see him with Sold Out. He's phenomenal. I love when he sings uh, Rise My Love, the verses on that. And, uh, yeah. So cool, so cool. Uh, great guy. We love you, Ian. Uh, great project. Well great done. Great project, man. dude. Well done. All around great. I like. I didn't not like. Yeah, like, that's I, right. I love every single song. Yeah, it was great. I will listen to it over and over again. It's a great project. And uh, coming up next, interview with Brian Hudson. Stay tuned. Yeah, that is it for our uh, review, review segment yeah. for today. And uh, thanks so much, y'all. All right, y'all, it's time for our interview segment here at Good News Southern Gospel. We've got the one and only Brian Hudson on the phone. How you doing, Brian? Man, I'm doing great. How you guys doing? We're doing great. This is Brian Hudson, the lead of the Sold Out Quartet. Uh, so it's good to have you on the phone. Talk a little bit about what's been going on with the group, what y'all been doing, where have y'all been, 
Uh, how's everything going? Well, things are going really well. Uh, we had kind of a rough February. We had some bus issues. Of course, every group has bus issues. Yes. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter if you've got a brand new bus or you have an older bus, you're going to have issues with the bus. But, uh, yeah, so every weekend in February, we were in Florida, and so we uh, had bus issues, and we had a, we were riding in a, uh, it, it was a, it was labeled as a 15 passenger van, but when you get six guys, equipment, product, <laughs> clothes, all in a van, it was more like a four passenger van. We were all scrunched up there like sardines. But, uh, so every weekend we were going 15 hours one way, 15 hours back, and 16, 17 hours back in a, in a van. So wow. those, 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 the, the month of February was kind of a, a hard physically on us, but but Eric, you know we're doing great. We've got he'll get his project out this year. That uh, if you don't have, you need to get it. Good. Um, and it, we just we took kind of our favorite hymns and kind of yeah kind of put sold out stamp on them. You know, and kind of jazzed them up a little bit. We're working on another recording. Uh, we're going to start. In fact, I start vocals next week on that. Um, so things are going great. You know, we're uh, uh, you know still doing about 180 concerts a year, and wow. uh, things are going. Are sold out, man. We we just got a new piano player. You, t- I think you talked to him in a uh, previous uh, interviews. Yeah, you know, John Lighton, and uh, he, he he's doing great with us, and and so uh, man, we're 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 thrilled about that, and uh, things are going great. Awesome, awesome, man. Um, and obviously, I know you through uh, your brother Jim, and because <laughs> I got to sing with your brother for two years, and. Uh, but I, I've also known you from singing with the Kingsmen. And how many right. years were you with the Kingsmen, Brian? I was there uh, almost a total of 10 years. Um, oh, wow. I was there from, was that long? Uh, from, from 96 to uh, 2001. And I left in 2001. I actually came back to the Kingsmen in 2007 uh, and uh, stayed till, uh, right at the beginning of 2012. So almost a total of 10 years. And I tell people... You know, if you die, you can't go back to the Kingsman. But if you're still alive, it's a pretty good chance you could go back. So uh, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of how we, you know, because Kingsman were always uh, known for you know going back and get former members to come back. You know, uh, you know, yeah. multiple times uh, it happened through the years because I, you know, once once the Kingsman always the Kingsman. So I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed my ten years there, and uh, you know, uh, it just is a great experience. You know, growing up in Southern Indiana. You know, you talked about my brother a second ago. You know, we, our favorite group growing up was the Kingsmen. We, we just loved yeah. the, the energy, the, you know, the live band, uh, you know, the way that the live recordings, you know, and we, we memorized the live recordings word for word. And <laughs> so we grew up loving the Kingsmen. And uh, then, you know, getting the, getting the call from Eldridge Fox and Greg Fox in 1996 and, mm. and asking me to come to Asheville to, to uh, audition. Uh, it wow. was just a dream come true. They hired me, and it was a great, great tenure. Both tenures were great, and thoroughly enjoyed them. So. And I'll, I'll say this. My favorite lineup, and I'll, I'll say this till my dying day, unless there's someone that really comes out, because obviously they have a great lineup, and they had uh, a great lineup with uh, um, Chris Jenkins, but my favorite lineup was with you, Harold Reed, Philip mm-hmm. Hughes, and uh, Ray. And yeah, just, yeah uh, we, we, we did uh, – you know, we had a we had a great run there um, with uh, with that lineup, and uh, you know, made a lot of great great CD, great projects, you yeah. might say, and um, uh, just uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Those guys were great to travel with. Uh, Harold and, and Phil were, uh, and Ray, of course. You know, I, I'll you know Ray Reese is uh, one of my heroes when it comes to, to to traveling and stuff, and you know he uh, uh, he, he uh, really took me under his wing when I first went there in 96 and uh you know I had been with the you know with the regional group the new generation out of Indiana and then you know joined the Heartland Quartet Heartland Boys uh 1993 but you know Ray kind of uh kind of took me under his wing and was like a second dad to me and then when my dad my actual father passed away in 1999 Ray was a real help to me and uh just kind of you know like I said took me under his wing and uh I always love Ray Reese. Uh, he's just one of a kind, one of the funniest guys you ever meet, and one of the greatest <laughs> guys to travel with. So 
But yeah, that was a great lineup. But you know, I, I'm still great friends with all those guys. So. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, um, I know because I've been just kind of piggyback on what Dan was saying, what you were saying. Um, yeah, I followed you, and actually, um, I think the first time I realized. Uh, just as a couple weeks ago that I realized that it was you on the Kingsman CD that did uh, When God Ran. Um, yes. And I remember yes. when that came out and I heard it on radio. Um, I remember actually requesting that song on radio uh, because it was my favorite song out at the time because I thought it was so unique oh. that it was a song that bridged genres, right? It, it, it was a crossover yes. song. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I was always, I've always been curious, what was it like, you know, trying to make that song your own when you're taking it from a different genre? Right. Well, to be honest with you, that, that's, that's the story of my life. You know, I had got away from God, you know, a few years ago and made some, uh, bad mistakes and just, mm. you know, let, I, I just got away from him and, and, uh, that, so the story of the prodigal really touched, uh, touched with me in a great way and. And uh, I had heard that song by Phyllis Craig and Dean mm -hmm. uh, back in the you know late '90s, I guess it was. And uh, uh, so when I approached uh, the Kingsman and approached Crossroads uh, Records, uh, who were, were recording mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Arden, North Carolina, I said I want to sing this song. And uh, they uh, they said, well, 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 we'll see if it. You know, I said, but I, in fact, I, I was joking, but I said. Uh, if we don't sing this song, I'm quit. I'm quit the group. I, I'm, I'm, we don't. We don't cut this song. And so, but it made the uh, it made the the, the ten that we were going to mm. cut for that album. And uh, I remember in the studio that day that we had a, it cut the track. The track was not great, and I was uh, starting the vocals. It was the last song we were going to do on that session. And my wife was in the in the truck room, and and uh, started to cut the first verse of it uh, because the Kingsman didn't like it. They did not mm. like it. Um, they felt it was too contemporary for us, for the for the Kingsmen. And uh, wow. so I said, if you'll just give it a chance, you'll just listen to the words. I said, I promise you, it'll be a song that will move people, that yeah. will touch people, that will speak yeah. to people. Because I had got in contact with the the writer of the song, uh, a guy named Benny Hester. He actually wrote the song in wow. the early days. And he had a real raspy... If you if you if you do a search sometime when you get a chance on the song, his version of it is Almighty God <laughs> the I mean it's, it's really, really uh, you know, that long haired eighties uh, yeah. you know rock sound, you know. Yeah. And he said he wrote it for people he wrote it for people that had grown up in church but had got away from God and they felt like wow. that God would not let them come home. Yeah. And uh and so anyway, yeah. time to fast forward. Uh, it was at the studio starting their vocals on it. And uh, my wife Yvonne said, the, the, the Crossroads guys, all the executives were saying, this is going to be the first single. This is going to mm. be the first single. Mm. This is going to be the title of the album. And uh, and it, it turned out great. And, and uh, it was uh, nominated Song of the Year, yeah. uh, 2008. Uh, went to number one. Just, but, but more than that, more than anything, you know, chart-wise, uh, it still speaks to people. You know, we, yeah. we started doing it with Sold Out about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And honestly, when Sold Out cut it, I didn't think we'd ever sing it out. I, I thought we would just record it. You know, you know, you guys know, there's songs that groups record that yeah. they never sing live. Right. Um, and uh, I remember it was New Year's Eve, and Matt called it, and there's probably not a, been a night nice since that we have not sung it. And it still mm -hmm. moves people. It speaks to people where they are, and... And uh, I guess if I got a signature song, it'd be When God Ran. I probably, I told you, Vaughn, I said, I'm probably singing that song until I'm 80 years old if I'm still alive, so. Wow. Great song. And, Great and song. Brian, literally, we were talking on the phone the other day, and you were, we were joking around, but um, I, I told you that literally is my favorite Kingsman song I've ever heard. Yeah. And I, I know there's some that'll stand the test of time, like, you know, the old songs, like When I Wake Up, and good, great songs yeah. like that, yeah. but... Uh, when God Ran, when that came out, I mean, it was mm -hmm. just phenomenal. And I, I watched that DVD of NQC over and over again. And I actually, I want to play that clip right now um, of Brian singing When God Ran because it's just, it's phenomenal. And it's just going to be a short clip, but um, I want to play towards the end of it where it gets a little climactic. Yeah. 
But I mean, I love your your vocals in there. Yep. Your passion yep. in there is just so evident. Absolutely. So we're gonna go ahead and play that right now, real quick. Okay. Awesome. All right. When he ran to me, he took me in his arms, held my head to his chest, said, "My son's come home again." Lifted my face, wiped the tears from my eyes with forgiveness in his voice. He said, "Son, do you know?" I he caught me by surprise Then he brought me to my knees When God ran I saw him run to me I was so Okay, and that was Brian singing When God Ran at NQC. And uh, Brian, what was that, 2009 or 2008? Uh, let's see, it was nominated 2008, and I think we sang it the first year, 2008. Okay. So that was, it was nominated uh, some of the year, 2009. Okay. That's right. Yeah, so the, yeah. That, that was at NQC back in uh, Louisville, and just a, a phenomenal song once again. Go check that out. Uh, buy it, uh, sold out CDs. Go to their website. Here's their website up here on the screen, and uh, just check them out. And Brian, why don't you talk? I know you talked about you got uh, you know some hymn projects and stuff like yeah. that coming out, but why don't you talk? Uh, is there anything else you know coming up for sold out soon, or any big things or big events? Yeah, I mean, we. Uh, I, I think uh, the, one of the, I think uh, most enjoyable uh, big events that we do all year is the Memphis Quartet Show, and I would encourage people who have never, if you like quartets and um, you like a lot of singing by your quartets. So what I mean by that is the, the cool thing about the Memphis Quartet Show, and I think this is the fourth year I think of it. Yeah, we've been on an every year, and man, mm -hmm. it's it's great. You know, you know, NQC, we love NQC, and, and we appreciate all the support they have given us. The only thing bad about NQC is, you know, you really limit on your time. Yeah, and absolutely. Groups and and I, 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 I totally understand that. You have so many artists, you know, on one night, mm -hmm. or, or, or a particular night, and you mm -hmm. know, sometimes a group will get eight minutes, sometimes they get 13 minutes, sometimes they get 20 minutes. Uh, but the awesome thing about Memphis Quartet Show um, both, both are great venues. We, we love both of those. But this quartet show, you know, you get 35, 40 minutes a piece. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you're able to, you know, they do an intermission, they come back and do two or three more songs, and do a finale together. So, you know, uh, this quartet show, we love that. So we, we get that coming up. We get the, uh, the James D. Vaughn Festival. We're part of that this year, our first time there. Um, you know, uh, Southern Indiana, we get Bean Blossom, uh, the Bill Bailey concert there, yeah. Bean Blossom. Yeah, that's a yeah. That, that's gonna be a lot of fun. It's been a couple of years since Sold Out has been there, so we're doing that. And oh, uh, you know, yeah. we we uh, gosh, we just finished up with the singing at Sea Cruise uh, back in February, and we're going again on next year on that. Uh, so just a lot of great events we got coming up, and a lot of fun things. And uh, you know, I travel with some of the greatest guys that I've ever traveled with. Yeah. Now, nearly twenty five years of being out here on the road full time. Um, you know, all the guys are, are great and sold out, and man, we just, we're having a blast, you know, trying to win people to Jesus and trying to encourage people. And so, uh, uh, yeah, we're just having a great time doing that. So, absolutely, awesome. man. That's, that's phenomenal. Um, and I, I love, like I said, I love your passion. I love your spirit about the ministry because it is a ministry, you know, 
Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. So I love that. Absolutely. We're going to get to the questions now. And, uh, awesome. We, we just got a couple questions on Facebook from some fans. And uh, Lydia asked the question, <laughs> do you ever get to drive the bus for the group? And if, if you do, is it fun? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Um, I actually drove the bus. Uh, I, I'm not a normal driver. When I first came and sold out, that was one of the first questions Matt Rankin asked me. He said, do you drive the bus? I said, well, uh, in all my years of being on the road, uh, I had only driven once. One time. Wow. Ray, Ray Reese was driving the bus, and he uh, he calls everybody cousin, okay? So yeah. I'm going to do my Ray Reese impression, okay? He said, hey, cousin, uh, can you come up and uh, drive the bus for a minute? <laughs> so I stepped up there, and uh, uh, he kind of stood up, kept his foot on the gas, and I kind of got underneath him. He jumped out of the driver's seat and went to use the restroom. Well, I'm holding the wheel. I'm driving down the road. Oh, my goodness. And uh, I'm saying, Ray, you finished yet? Ray, you finished yet? Yeah, if you keep, you keep going, cousin. You're doing a good job. You just keep going. <laughs> so I'm, I'm driving and for like, uh, you know, seven or eight miles. And finally he comes back there and, you know, t- you know takes over to drive it again. But I had not really never driven the bus. <laughs> I don't, we always have a... You know, Kingsman had a full-time driver. Wow. And, yeah, and when they didn't, you know, when the other guys would drive, I, it was just never me. So I never really learned to drive the bus. Well, when I kind of sold out. Um, I said, well, uh, well, I, no, I don't really drive, but I think that you need me to learn. And uh, so I, I jumped on this, you know, sold out bus in 2012. And I actually drove last November for a few miles because I wanted to help the guys relieve the guys a little bit. But um, I need a little practice. My, <laughs> my, uh, my stopping uh, and, and pulling them to, to, a, you know, to, to a truck stop wasn't that great. I mean, I didn't hit anything, but it wasn't that great. <laughs> but I, I do need some practice. And uh, uh, it was okay. They put me on a straight stretch in Iowa. I remember that. It was uh, just a old back you road, you know, yeah. pretty good road. But uh, it was straight. So that, we like that. We, I want to practice on straight roads. There you go. So. Wow, that's that's hilarious. <laughs> go ahead. All right, Michael Garbowitz, which who honestly, shout out to Michael, he is one of your biggest fans. So uh, yeah. he wants to know, who is your biggest influence in Southern Gospel music? Gosh, well, um, <laughs> growing up, man, that, that, that's kind of a hard question. Um, there's so many. I, I, I mean, I... I, I've been a lead singer for so long, and so I, I, I like different singers for different reasons. Uh, my favorite tenor singer would be, you know, Ernie Phillips of all time, yep. Kingsman. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, mm-hmm. I think Dusty Barrett, to me, is one of the greatest singers in yep. gospel music. That, yep. You know, uh, but but influences on me personally, um, the late great Jack Tony, who sang with the Statesman for years, mm-hmm. is one of the Thank classiest you, lead singers. Um, and of course, growing up in the '80s, uh, I'm showing my age now. Uh, Michael <laughs> English was a big influence on me. Ivan wow. Parker, yeah. uh, Glenn Payne, formerly yeah. the Cathedrals, was a great influence. Uh, and Jim Hamill, uh, you know, uh, Jim Hamill was mainly, Hold you know, known for the years of being an MC for the Kingsman. Yeah. But Hamill was a great lead singer too, and and <laughs> one of the greatest, one of the greatest things he ever taught me in the in the time that. Uh, when I came in, you know, he was in the process of retiring, but he was still on the he was still on the Kingsman bus, uh, you know, for, for many many concerts. Was you know when you when you stand in the lead position, you take you take ownership of it, hmm. and you you uh, you command that spot where you're standing when you sing, hmm. and you know don't be cocky, but be confident and be confident in your in your singing your ability, and uh, so. You know, those guys I've mentioned are all played a part in it. Yeah. There's all the other things too, but those guys really inspired me. You know, I, I wanted to be, um, I always wanted to be a good singer, and I had somebody tell me once, you're a good singer, but you're not a pretty singer. <laughs> I thought, you know, that, uh, that kind of makes sense. So, <laughs> I, you know, you know uh, so I, I kind of did my best to, you know, sing the notes I was supposed to sing, but make it a little more, um, 
more music in my voice, if that makes sense. Ooh, that's, so, that's, uh, that's yeah, and also Tim Surik, you know, the, the guy that I replaced uh, in uh, 1996. You know, he's the guy for which you were here and songs like that. Yeah. Uh, so, hmm. guys like that really inspired me to, you know, to, uh, you know, it's my big influence. It's also, you know, out of Southern Gospel, uh, Elvis Presley was a big influence on me, his voice, and, and so, uh, you know, I know uh, Elvis and Michael Bublé, these days, mm. I like Michael Bublé, his, his, his voice and singing. And, Absolutely, uh, other, yeah. I, I don't really keep up with, I guess you might call it modern music, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. A lot of influences. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're going to continue on with the questions. Uh, that was a great question from Mike. Uh, Nick Comstock asked the question, what has been, I know you probably have a lot of them, I know I, I sure have, you probably saw the video a billion times, um, but <laughs> what, what um, is your most embarrassing moment that you've ever had on stage? Oh, on stage. Um, gosh, well, I've had a few. Um, <laughs> I guess, gosh. Um, well, uh, I, I think... Um, Probably, um, okay, you know how singers, if they forget words, they can make up mm. words on the spot? Yeah. Man, I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. You think, I'm, I've written songs before, I've written one songs in my lifetime, and if I forget the words to a particular song, dude, I am lost <laughs> as a ball in the high weeds. I cannot <laughs> make up words. And so, a couple times, uh, you know, especially if, if, if I'm, if I'm fighting a sickness and I'm trying to sing around this crud in my throat mm -hmm. or, yeah. you know, this, you know, you know you're, you're stopped up or something, um, I, if I get distracted and I forget words, man, I, I'm just like, I'm making up stuff. <laughs> I don't even, you know, I think the, the most recently was uh, I was sold out and we were singing a song that Matt Rankin wrote. Uh, that makes it even worse when you get the songwriter standing right next to you. That's really hard to make up words. And it was a song called Thank You, Lord. And uh, it, the, the, the end, I think the words are, are supposed to be, uh, you, you see the passion in my heart or something. And I said, I don't even know what I said. I was like, blah, 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 blah. I'm making up, making up a, a sound to come out. Wow. And I didn't dare around and look at the guys because they were all... <laughs> You know, about to bust out laughing because they knew what I said made no sense whatsoever. Uh, and so after we got done, I just went ahead and broke the ice and I just repeated back the little mumbling that I did during the song. And they all just died laughing. And so we, you know, made a joke about it. But, uh, you know, I, I went on, I'm on stage with my zipper down before. Great. Where I, you know, I'm thinking, you know what, how long have I been wearing pants? Oh, my goodness. A long time, and how does a man forget to zip his pants? You know, you you, you know. So I've had those instances where, you know, or uh, yeah. oh, I've, never I've never dropped my mic, but I've I've <laughs> forgot to, you know, on, on some of the new cordless mics. You know, you have that mute button on the bottom mm -hmm. of the microphone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just touch it with your thumb, you mute the mic, and you, you're singing your guts out. Nobody can hear you. So there's been a couple times where I'd step up to sing and I forget to unmute the mic, and that's kind of embarrassing. But yeah, uh, yeah I've, had, uh, I've had some embarrassing moments for sure. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Which one you want to go to? Uh, Barry. Barry. Barry asks, can you talk a little bit about the ministry that you have with your wife? Yes. Um, yeah, my wife and I, we decided a couple, three years ago to... Uh, you know, we have a passion for, for couples and for families. You know, we're, we're a blended family. We have a, a mm. brand new grandbaby. Uh, she'll be a year in May. Wow. Uh, so I am, I'm old, guys, okay? I'm old. Just go ahead and say <laughs> it. I'm old. But, uh, but you yeah, know, Yvonne and I, we, uh, during sold outs, uh, vacation, like during the Christmas holidays, we take, we take the entire month off. Uh, my wife and I, we go out and, we, uh, we minister together, we sing, and we, we kind of share from our heart. Our passion is for couples, and, you know, my, my passion personally is, is for, for guys to be godly men, to be godly husbands, to be godly fathers, uh, to be who God has called us to be. Amen. And so, 
uh, and she has a passion for young girls. You know, you, young girls are bombarded with mm. magazine articles and saying you have to look this way and dress this way and be this way to be accepted by society. And, you know, she has a passion for, for young ladies and try to encourage them to, you know, be women of integrity. And, and so that's kind of our heartbeat. And so we, you know, we have a Facebook page called Rescue Me Ministries where we, we send out devotions. We also write a blog uh, as a couple, awesome. you know, Yvonne and I, just, just encouraging couples and encouraging families. And, and uh, so we get to go out and minister you know, during the month of December and even a couple of weeks during the, the summer, we're actually, you know, we, we, we do seminars and we're able to do, uh, awesome. you know, marriage retreats and things like that. You know, trying to just, you know, make couples, uh, uh, the more, the closer they are to God, the closer they're going to be to their spouse. Amen. So we feel like that's a big, that's a big part of our ministry is, is encouraging couples and families and uh, just encouraging men to be men, men of integrity and, uh, you know, the, the, the more you love God, the more you're going to love your spouse, and that's kind of our, our heartbeat. And so, but, but thanks for asking about that. We're, we're really excited about what God is doing cool. in our, our ministry, you know, aside from what you know, we do uh, you know, as a career. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So, and uh, you guys recorded, you and uh, Yvonne recorded a CD together, correct? Yeah, we've actually recorded three. Uh, wow. We, we actually did what we call a love song album. Mm. Uh, just ten of our, well, eleven mm. of our favorite songs, love songs. Uh, you know, we uh, I did a Michael Bublé song that I, that I sang to her at our wedding. That's awesome. Uh, we written, cool. we wrote a song uh, called "You You Rescue Me," and and because we feel like God put us together because uh, God God ultimately rescued us, but He put us together so we could rescue each other. Yeah. And uh, so it's a lot of fun. We did some Eagle songs. We did some Elvis songs. We right. did the. Uh, uh, the Stand By Me, you know. Oh, that's cool. Uh, just, okay, we did that, and it was, it was a lot of fun, and we, we recorded a couple other CDs that we used uh, during our, uh, you know, during our, our, our ministry to t- together during the holidays. And so that was a lot of fun, and uh, we get to go out. And she had never sang before in front of an audience. I mean, she was a, a wow. car singer, you know, where she would sing in the car to the radio. <laughs> but, she, but she came a long way, and... Yeah. Uh, and That's awesome. It's just, she, she could stand up and, and you know and uh, and talk for thirty minutes, but <laughs> actually singing in front of an audience was kind of hard. But yeah, she's come along, very proud of her. And That's so awesome. It's a lot of you know. So. Yeah, that, that that's great, uh, Brian, and we we appreciate your guys' ministry, yeah. uh, especially, you know, I, I like watching your guys' posts on Facebook and whatnot, so that's awesome. Uh, real quick, got to wrap it up here, but uh, in like 20 seconds, what is your favorite Kingsman song and what is your favorite sold-out song of all time? Brian, ask that question. Oh, gosh, uh, probably Kingsman song would have to be uh, When God Ran, uh, not because I sing it, but... Uh, <laughs> but this is a great song. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, favorite pull out song. Um, I actually, a song that um, uh, Matt Rankin wrote several years ago called Who's This Man? It's one of my favorite songs. Oh. It's, uh, um, it's not your typical three chords in a cloud of dust uh, song that you know a lot of Southern Gospel people like, but uh, I love Southern Gospel, don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah. So I think he's probably one of my favorites. And Dusty Barrett, when Dusty Barrett steps out and does uh, Maker of the Rain with just oh, him my and the goodness. piano. Holy moly. One of the most gorgeous things you'll ever hear. Yeah. So uh, that's one of my favorite sold out songs. Absolutely, man. And um, thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, yeah. We're actually right after this interview. That way we can see a little bit more uh, of you guys. I, I want to show a clip of, um, oh my goodness, what's the bit? Arise My Love. Because yes. that's literally yes. My, yes. That's my favorite song you guys sing of all time, and uh, it's phenomenal. Thank you, man. So we're going to show that right after we're done with this interview. Um, actually, we're wrapping it up right now. But uh, thank you so much, Brian, uh, for being on the show today. We really appreciate you, man. Um, we respect You're you. Guys. You're welcome. We love you guys' ministry, yeah. love Sold Out, and uh, hope to see you on the road soon, okay? You guys take care, and thanks, uh, thanks for the interview. And the questions weren't that hard. I think they're <laughs> All right, okay. man. You have a good one. Take care, guys. Yep. The earth trembled and the tomb began to shake. And like a lightning from heaven, that old stone was rolled away. And as dead men, the guards, they all stood there in front. 
bright as a power of love yeah. displayed its love. Yeah. Suddenly a melody filled the air, riding wings of the wind. It was That was just a short clip of the great sold out song, Arise My Love. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Make sure you check out the sold out quartet live when they're coming to your area. Make sure you check them out. Absolutely. Buy Absolutely. their product. Their hymn CD is no joke. Gotta get, check that out. And then when they come out with their new project that Brian was talking about, check that out as well. Great one, interview. Yeah, and once again, here's their website. That way you can see Yeah. right here on the screen in front of you. Yeah. And um, uh, just go check them out. Check out Brian's uh, Facebook page yeah. the rescue me ministries yeah. or uh yeah was that rescue me okay yeah. um and just check them out love yeah. them uh next week got an exciting yeah. episode stay tuned uh great interview next week so we will announce that uh th during the week on our facebook page yeah like our facebook page that is good news southern gospel it's yeah. gonna be right here let's put it right here okay yeah, the link to our facebook yeah. page yeah and then also it's gonna be um our channel go to our channel our youtube yeah. channel subscribe 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 yes please and uh just uh we appreciate you guys it's been crazy it's been awesome uh we love y'all and uh we hope to see you next week here on good news of the gospel this is steve mcjunkins i'm daniel rivera thank you for joining us once again <coughs> on good news you go ahead it? no go ahead all right. Southern gospel. Blessed are the feet that yeah. take the truth. Good news, good, good news.